Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. You can also use the promo code MTGMUDSTA for 5% off your orders from Face to Face Games, Canada's largest Magic the Gathering store, with qualified orders getting free shipping Canada wide. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic goblin gang. Hey gang, my Kickstarter campaign for a playmat is about to go live, with it set to launch on July 1st. It features the incredible artwork of Andre Garcia, not to mention has tons of great add-ons, like dice, tokens, and a sweet two-sided coin. Be sure to use the link in the pinned comment below to be able to sign up to let you know when it goes live. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game was filmed in my studio, with Max playing Ramos, MJ also playing Ramos, I'm playing Doretti, Duke of Dumpsters, and Nick is playing Siani and Radiant. I win the die roll and start us off. I draw and play Karn's Bastion. Max plays a tapped in Dath of Triome. Nick plays a Plains. MJ draws and plays a Windswept Heath, cracking it to go and find Spar's headquarters. I have a Mountain for turn and cast Mindstone before passing turn. Max draws plays a Wooded Foothills, and cracks it, losing one, going to find a Rogrin Triome, and passing. Nick draws, plays a Plains, and casts Arcane Signet. MJ has a Mana Confluence, and passes turn. I draw, and sadly miss a land, but do have enough for a Basalt Monolith, passing. Max plays a Mana Confluence, and casts Wood Elves. As it comes in, he goes to find another Triome, and passes turn. Nick draws, plays a tapped Azorius Guildgate, and passes to MJ. MJ has an Ancient Tomb for turn, and casts a Chromatic Lantern. They then ship the turn. I play a Mountain, and cast Doretti, Duke of Dumpsters. I uptick my Planeswalker Commander to discard Spine of Ishsa and Planar Bridge, drawing two. I follow up with a Soul Ring and then cast Scrap Trawler and pass. Max draws and plays a Windswept Heath. He sacrifices it, losing one. However, responding to the trigger, Nick flashes in an Avon Mind Sensor. Max gets super lucky finding a forest off his top four and he then casts Prismatic Bridge, and passes. Nick draws, and plays a Plains. He casts an Azorius Signet, and then Siani, moving to combat. He swings the Mind Sensor to ready for two, and passes turn. MJ draws, and plays Kalamax. However, they miss a land drop, and have to pass to me. My turn has me playing Detection Tower, and I down to ready to turn the Basalt Monolith into a Planar Bridge. I follow up with a trading post after that, and pass turn. Max flips a Fleetfoot Dancer off the Prismatic Bridge, and then draws for turn. He plays a Caverns of Souls, naming Dragon, and moves to combat. He swings the Fleetfoot Dancer to ready, dealing 4, and the Trashmaster dies. Max then casts his own Chromatic Lantern post-combat, and passes to Nick. Nick draws and plays an Elgith Crossroads Augur. He goes to attack, swinging both flyers at me for 5, and drawing 2 thanks to Elgith. Once he's done, he passes. MJ draws and goes to combat. They swing Kalamax at me, and then cast Abzan Charm, which gets copied, drawing 4 and losing 4. MJ then follows up with the Ozolith, but still doesn't have a land, and has to pass. I draw and play a Blasphemous Act to wipe the board. I then recast Doretti, and uptick the walker, discarding Static Orb and Sphere of Resistance. 
I then play Reliquary Tower and pass. Max flips a Savage Knuckleblade off the Prismatic Bridge and draws. He then gives a Knuckleblade haste and goes to combat, swinging it to ready. I activate my trading post to make a GOAT token and chump it to save Duretti. And after combat, Max casts Ramos and passes. Nick draws and plays a Warden of Evo's Isles, and then a Cartographer's Hawk. After that, he passes to MJ. MJ has a Planes for turn and casts their commander, Ramos, and passes to me. I draw and cast a Mox Opal. I then uptake to Ready again, but discard nothing and pass to Max. Max flips a Prince of Thralls off the Prismatic Bridge and draws for turn. He plays a Savai Triome and then casts a Brazen Upstart before going to combat. He swings Ramos at me and the Knuckleblade at Nick. And in response, I activate the Planar Bridge. I tutor up a duplicate into play and target Ramos. In response, Max casts Unleash the Inferno to kill it and destroy my Soul Ring with the spillover. Max is then able to make 10 mana off of Ramos by removing 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters and pumps the Knuckle Blade 3 times. This has Nick responding to the last one with Warrant and puts it on top of Max's library. Ramos then gets exiled, and after that, Max passes. Nick draws and evokes Muldrifter drawing 2. He then sacrifices it and plays Kanji Sky Warden. He goes to attack, swinging both flyers at Max. Max takes four, and the cartographer's hawk goes to Nick's hand as he goes to grab a planes, and after that, he passes turn. MJ draws and plays a scrubland. They then play a soulfire grandmaster, passing to me. I uptick to ready, pitching Blood Moon and Arcbound Ravager to draw two cards. I then play Arch of Araska, and having enough mana for another planar bridge activation if I need it, pass turn to Max. Max flips into a Savage Knuckleblade again and draws. He then plays a Violent Ultimatum, targeting Soulfire Grandmaster, Planar Bridge, and Doretti. I activate the bridge in response, grabbing a Sculpting Steel and having it come in as a copy of the bridge. The Ultimatum resolves, and Max then goes to attacks. He swings the Knuckleblade and the Brazen Upstart at me, and the Prince of Thralls at Nick. We both take our beatings, and Max passes turn. Nick draws and plays an island. He then plays Radiant and recasts the Cartographer's Hawk again and then swings the Warden at max. After that, he passes and on his end step, MJ casts Sultai Charm to draw two and discard one. MJ draws and plays a Flooded Strand. They then play Tigum Ojutai Master and pass to me. I draw and play an Inventor's Fair. I activate the Planar Bridge to go and grab Ugin the Ineffable and down ticket to destroy Prince of Thralls. I then play a Free Painter's Servant from hand, naming Green, and after that, pass to Max. Max flips into a Zeator's Envoy and draws. He then plays Rafine's Tower and casts Zeator the Incinerator. Moving to his end step, he flings the Brazen Upstart and my Painter's Servant with Zeator. And with a target on the stack, I respond by sacrificing it to Trading Post to grab back my Soul Ring. The Upstart Trigger reveals Langrella, the Magpie, and after that, Max passes. Nick draws for turn and decides to no longer pity me, swinging Kanji and Radiant at me to take me out. I die while Max shows off what the Gilded Foil looks like. Spoiler alert, they look great. Nick then plays a Sperry of the Inscrutable, and passes. On his end step, MJ casts a Maestro's Charm to look at the top 5, grabbing one and binning the rest. MJ draws and casts Whirlwind of Thought. Moving to combat, they swing Tigum at Nick and Ramos at Max. Nick double blocks Tigum with Asperia and Kanji, while Max goes to chump with Zeatora. MJ then removes 5 counters from Ramos to cast Band Charm and puts Kanji on the bottom and draws a card, and gets to rebound it while Nick taps Kanji in response to give Radiant protection from Black. MJ also casts a Jun Charm to put 2 counters on Tigum and rebounds the spell as well. 
For their final charm, MJ casts Obscure Charm to destroy the Savage Knuckle Blade and gets to rebound this charm as well. Damage then resolves, and in their post-combat main phase, MJ plays a Wooded Foothills and then casts three visits, going to find a Bayou, and passes to Max. Max flips an Imperial Archangel and draws. He plays a tapped Godless Shrine and then plays Langrella. MJ responds by removing 5 counters from Ramos for 10 more mana and casts a Simic Charm to give his permanence hexproof. Max decides not to exile anything with Langrella and goes right to combat. He swings at MJ for 5 with the Envoy and then passes turn. On Max's end step, Nick casts Commander's Insight to draw 4 and moves to his turn. Nick draws and swings Radiant and Asperia at MJ. He names Colgan's command off Asperia's charm, but sadly doesn't spike it. After combat, he plays Court of Grace to become the Monarch, and passes, drawing a card. MJ rebounds all their spells on their upkeep, and with the first one on the stack, Nick casts Render Silent, trying to stop him from casting the rest. MJ responds by casting a Kyrobetti charm to kill the Warden of Evo's Isle, and then cast Ojedai's Command, they pick the modes to draw a card and bring back the Soulfire Grandmaster. They then make 10 mana with Ramos and activate Soulfire Grandmaster, playing Boros Charm to deal 4 to Nick and returns the spell to their hand. They then cast it again, dealing 4 more to Nick and return it to hand once more. MJ then casts their third Boros Charm, dealing a further 4 damage to Nick and returns it to their hand again. Finally, the Render Silent resolves and MJ can't cast spells for the rest of the turn, and plays an Underground Sea instead. Moving to combat, they swing Ramos and Tigam at Nick. Nick chumps Ramos with the Hawk, and after that, MJ passes. Max flips into a Stoic Angel and draws. He plays Karthus, Tyrant of Jund. MJ then removes 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters from Ramos to make 10 mana, and activates the Soulfire Grandmaster. They then cast Boros Charm, dealing 4 to Nick and gaining 4, and returning the charm to hand. They cast it again, and deal 4 to Nick, and gain 4 life. Max then steals all dragons, and moves to combat, swinging MJ's own Ramos at them for lethal commander damage, and the rest of his creatures at Nick, winning him the game. Game Review Time so this game was filmed during my birthday stream and followed one of my most favorite games in the last little while. It was a Ramos vs. Ramos vs. Ramos vs. Ramos game where each of us played Ramos and had a different version of the deck. In MJ's case, they built Ramos Charms, which as you saw was particularly powerful. Max was playing Ramos Indestructible, aka Ramos Gods, and had a lot of the stuff from Kaltime and Theros slapped in there. Nick's Siani and Radiant deck is still his budget-friendly version, I think when people hear the term budget they tend to assume lower power or slower, but honestly it didn't even slow the deck down. I was incredibly impressed to see it in action, and I love building with restrictions like this in mind. The Duke of Dumpsters ended up in the dumpster after getting attacked by three other players. Apparently all you gotta do is play a Painter's Servant or a Planner Bridge, and suddenly you're the bad guy at the table. Who would have guessed?